Hi there, this is Love Johar and uh, this is another training video for you. Uh, in this particular training video, we will see the different uh, terms and definitions which are used in ISO 27001 and ISMS. So, before I start, let me give you a brief introduction. My name is Love Johar and I have a very strong information technology security portfolio and I have an extensive work experience and knowledge in, for, in information technology, IT security, ISMS and ISO 27001 and i have also worked with different security companies in the past in my career so why i'm doing this and why i have created this channel so i have created this channel to help anyone who is currently studying or planning to study about isms that is information security management system and iso 27001 implementation so i will also try to give you some free study materials for any of the topics that you will be interested in that i'll be discussing over here so I want to share my entire ISMS journey and experience with all of you out there so that you do not have to go through all the different uh, paths and different routes that I have been while I was studying my ISO 27001 for the first time. So this is the main uh, reason why I am uh, you know, posting these videos and why I have created this uh, channel. So in this particular training video we will be discussing about some basic ISO 27001 terms and definitions which are used in ISMS and they will actually help you a lot because these are the terms and definitions that you will be working in throughout your career of information security and if you are a lead auditor or if you are a ISMS implementator this will actually help you on a, on a lot. So if in case you are confused by data security acronym or abbreviation or expression or any information security jargons for that matter this video will actually help you and it will definitely try to clear those jargons out for you so here are some terms that will actually help you in process of becoming ISO IEC 27001 certified and it will actually as I said help you in the entire career of ISO 27001. So let's start with asset. What exactly do we understand by an asset? So basically an asset is something that has value to the organization so which means that an asset may include any physical goods or hardware items, a kind of software licenses, information, people and most importantly any organization's uh, reputation is also a precious asset. So as I said, an asset is any tangible or intangible thing or characteristics which has value to the organization. So when, whenever we'll talk about assets, they lo there's only one term which will come to our mind which is value to the organization. So whenever you will be hearing about this asset, always think about the term value. So asset can also be called as information asset and these terms can be used interchangeably. So which means that some people can call asset as an information asset as well. So after asset let's try to understand what do we mean by attack what what is an attack and how can a security attack happen so basically an attack is nothing but an attempt to compromise an asset by various means which includes destroying exposing altering or gaining unauthorized access to an asset so attacks uh, will basically try to cause some kind of a harm to your asset that is the main purpose of causing an attack in the first place so an attack can happen either online or offline depending upon the situation so online attacks as you know can happen through either a phishing attack through your email if you will try to download any uh, you know URL or any uh, such files which you are not sure of so then you will be triggering the phishing attacks and also malware payloads and offline attacks can also happen uh, if by any chance and uh, so these are basically the offline attacks so malware payloads if, if let's say you click on a website which has some suspicious download and you try to download it so it will trigger some malware payloads which will actually try to destroy your system so that is an online attack so if we talk about offline attacks they can also happen so let's say by any chance if an outsider gets access to your physical network of the organization then you can imagine what kind of uh, damage you can possibly do with your organizational network so this this is kind of an offline attack which, which can actually happen by by letting uh, you know someone uh, who is not you know authorized to enter the organization within the organization premises so after attack let's see what exactly do we mean by authentication so why why should we use authentication in the first place what is the purpose of using authentication so authentication is nothing but a method of assuring that an entity has the characteristics that the entity claims to process so it basically means that a kind of it's basically a kind of a process that is used to confirm that a claimed characteristics of an entity is actually correct which means that an entity is actually what it it is it is trying to imply 
so that is what we check by using authentication whether the, uh, you know entity is authentic or not that is the main purpose of authentication so after authentication let's try to see what exactly do we understand by business continuity so business continuity uh, you know and what do we need business continuity for in a day to day basis so basically business continuity is nothing but accumulation of certain procedures certain policies and certain processes for ensuring that business operations under all conditions are maintained throughout the organization which means that all the business operations and services will continue to run at acceptable predefined levels after disruptive incidents may occur and organizations basically use business continuity procedures to ensure that their operations continue without any adverse effects even after the disruptive incidents occur let's say for example if we have two sites in an organization the site a and site b and if god forbid something happened to the site a so, so uh, in in those circumstances the site b will, will be able to uh, take care of the entire uh, you know production and all the critical processes which are you know there in use in site a so which means that all the all the all the sites are there as failovers so that's how business continuity is planned and uh, after business continuity let's say let's see what exactly do we mean by a control what is a control and why do we need to have controls in place so control is nothing but a measure that in any way modifies the current risk that is associated with an asset so which means that you can implement any policies procedures uh, in order to reduce the associated risk with any asset by applying specific controls so as i mentioned controls can include things like practices processes policies procedures programs tools techniques technologies devices information processing facilities anything controls can basically be anything which which you are trying to implement in order to reduce a risk so controls are sometimes also referred to as safeguards or countermeasures you can select the controls that your organization needs in order to implement risk management your list of controls will ultimately make up and define your statement of applicability document so your soa document which is the statement of applicability document is nothing but a list of all the controls that you will actually try to implement during uh, in in your organization so you have to specify all the controls that you will be using from annex a of iso 27001 and you basically have to specify Uh, which controls you will be implementing and which controls will be you be exempting in the statement of applicability document that you will be preparing out so after controls let's see what exactly do we understand by a corrective action what do we mean by a corrective action so a corrective action is nothing but an action that eliminates the cause of a non conformity and it ensures that the non conformity will not occur by any chance so as i have mentioned the corrective actions are nothing else but simple steps that are taken to eliminate the causes of existing non conformities in order to prevent their reoccurrence so whenever we try to make sure that the non conformities do not occur in the future we try to uh, have in place uh, some corrective actions so that it cannot reoccur or retrigger in the future so that is the purpose of corrective actions so that's in uh, that's it for this particular video and uh, let's see what exactly do we have to cover in the next upcoming sessions so since isms and iso 27001 you know are very vast topics so i will try to cover some more iso 27001 terms and definitions in the upcoming sequent chapters so that's it for this particular video and i request you to please subscribe to my channel if you are really interested to study iso 27001 and understand its implementation so information security management system is a very vast topic so please ensure that you subscribe to get most out of these videos and if you have by any chance any questions please feel free to comment below and i will be really happy to respond back to you thank you so much this is love johar thank you